Wait, I get name dropped in an, in, an, in a Dr. K video? All right. All right. All right. Let's listen to this. I don't know anything about this motherfucker. Let's do it. Let's do it. This is uh, healthygamer.gg. Oh, boy. That's a good name. Uh, healthygamer.gg. How logical thinking actually leads to irrationality. All right. Let's find out if this is any good. Let's do it. I've never done this before. Let's react live to a guy I've never seen before. He's a psychiatrist. That tells me all I need to know. <laughs> and go. so I encourage- Oh yeah, oh yeah, you could tell. He, he's a psychiatrist because he says he's a psychiatrist right there. And so I encourage all of you to accept responsibility for your situation in life. Because Wait a if minute. you accept responsibility- Wait a minute. Isn't this the guy? Isn't this the guy who like had a public counseling session with Destiny in the past? Wait, isn't this that guy? The guy who has like a, a line of like questionable ethics issues? Oh, oh, how interesting. Ooh, I love that. I love avoiding ethical issues by technically being in a new field that doesn't have any regulation yet. Yeah, he, this is the guy who does like counseling on stream. He does like counsels in a public, counseling in public. Hold on. Let's do a little bit of shit. Let's do a little bit of, let's do a little bit of verification. Dr. K becomes a degen gamer. Therapist analyzes squid game. Hmm. Therapist reacts. Therapist talks. Why self-pity can feel so good. This guy is very, very, very hammering on the fact that he's a therapist. How years of porn consumption affects the brain's ability to form relationships. Uh-oh. Dr. K becomes an incel. Coaching workshop. Okay. Wildcat talks stress and pro productivity. Um. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Ice Poseidon, autism misunderstood, giving, I don't know. This is a little, I don't know. All right. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I was thinking of the wrong person. He did like what was essentially therapy streams with people. See, that's what I thought, Doe. Good to see you, Doe. Yeah, I feel like this was the guy. He's been on a red pill arc recently. Oh, nice. Love that. Red pilled. Dr. K and Abba Atlas on men's issues. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Um. Okay. Weird. A therapist guide to therapy. Okay. Talking with ContraPoints. Okay, so it looks like he does some interviews. I don't, I don't know. I can't tell. This is one of those areas where I wonder where they land. Talking with Ferociously Steph. Well, that's cool. Talking with Amaranth. Well, that's cool. Um, huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. His video with Contra was promoted out of the world. Oh, this is a big... I have a memory of him months ago doing a bunch of therapy streams with people. He said he got into it because he was a gamer and understood gaming addiction. Then he started talking to a lot of big streamers about a lot of stuff. Huh. Dr. K had a string of videos with a streamer that ended up killing himself. It was about the guy's depression. So sad and cringy in retrospect. Oh, no. Oh, no. He has, he has weird takes on ethnic essentialism. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, well, you know what? Let's see what he has to say about this, okay? Let's see what he's got to say about this. Let's react. All right, let's stop positing. I'm going to give him a fair shake. Let's hear what he has to say about this. For your situation, you also have the power to control it. Right? I know it sounds kind of weird, but if other people are to blame, then I can't do anything about it. Because I can't change other people. You can try, but it's not going to work. So let's kind of get started. So a lot of times people kind of assume that, you know, oh, if wow. they're highly rational, Maybe that they're like that. not emotional. 
So we see this a lot in argument, right? Where people will kind of be like, oh, you know, this person is a... is a Okay, okay, so this was somebody different. This was Drew Welty, is a different person who was the public counselor that I was thinking of. For some reason, I thought this was Dr. K, but this is Drew Welty, apparently. Okay, so that's been cleared up now. Thanks for that. Dr. K did a session with Destiny as well. Okay, so maybe I was just getting them mixed up from two different streams. Interesting. All right, well, let's watch this and we'll see how it goes. Let's watch this and see how it goes. You know, this person is getting emotional and therefore their argument is wrong. And it's really tricky because we, you know, especially like a lot of people of our generation will think of themselves as like rational thinkers. And part of the reason that they conclude that they are a rational thinker, or I am a rational thinker and someone else is not, is because this person is displaying emotion and I am not displaying emotion. So if this person well, displays emotion- the funny emotion thing is they I usually are displaying some level of emotion, but, but yeah. I am not displaying emotion, then I am the more rational thinker, therefore my argument is more correct. And it's almost like we sort of say that the display of emotion becomes like a point against our rational argument. Like if I make a rational argument, but I make it emotionally, you know, if I have an argument, but I make it emotionally, then it becomes not rational. I like this. I um, like that he's addressing this because I actually think that's an important thing to remember that uh, the points like how uh, uh, an argument is delivered versus the actual argument at hand is actually really important. I'm glad. Yeah, so far this is really good. I want to give this guy a fair shake. I don't know anything about him. So let's Which find is kind out. of interesting because th that's not really the case. So I know a lot of people think of themselves as like very rational thinkers, but if you really like engage them in conversation and they don't think of themselves as emotional, like you can actually uncover a lot of emotion very quickly. And the simplest way to tell, you know, someone who thinks that they're a mm. rational thinker, that they're, you know, a simple way to elicit emotion is to tell them that their logic is wrong. Just be like, no, bro, like your lo the logical chain that you are outlining is incorrect. And if you say that, you will see an emotional response. The That's emotion true. will definitely come right I do that all the time. Right it's out, true. Right? So it's kind of interesting because we sort of think about rationality and emotionality at opposite ends of the spectrum. And in a sense, that's actually somewhat true. And we'll get to the neuroscience in a second. But there is reciprocal inhibition between our cortices and our limbic system. So our cortices is where a lot of our higher order thinking comes from. And there's, there's a limbic system is where our emotions come from. And what reciprocal inhibition means is that our cortices will suppress our emotions and our emotions will suppress our cortices. So there's a reason why some people think that, you know, if you're emotional, you're not going to be thinking rationally. So there's some truth to that. But that's unfortunately not entirely how the mind works. So the first thing that we want to kind of dig into is that skill at argument does not necessarily make you rational. So a lot of times I'll see this in couples counseling where like one person is like a better debater than the other person. And so anytime they have a conflict, like one person is like able to form their arguments more like coherently and therefore they will win the argument. And then they assume that because they won the argument that their logic and their rational thinking is superior to the other person's. It's kind of interesting, right? Because if I that win an argument, doesn't that imply that the rationality actually. that I used is more correct than yours? But hold on, like, let's take a step back and recognize that, like, debate- Oh, no! Oh, no, everybody! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Uh-oh! and skill at argument is like a skill. So if I had someone who was a master debater and I even like I gave them a, a, a bad premise to argue, they would be able to like even take something illogical mm -hmm. and actually like outmaneuver someone who is not oh, as good yeah, as Oh yeah, totally. This is called right? rhetoric. This is the difference between correctness and rhetoric skills. So one way that we sort of justify the rationality of our argument is if we can out argue some or out argue someone else because so if I can convince someone or if I can outmaneuver someone using my skill of argument then I must be correct. But that's not actually the case, right? Because skill at argument is just skill at argument it doesn't actually mean that you're logically correct. It just means that you're better at outmaneuvering another person. And so this is kind of in interesting because you know like 
just because you're able to outmaneuver someone doesn't actually make you right. But then you kind of scratch your head and you're like, but if then what does make me right? How do I know if I'm rational if like skill at argument doesn't Ooh, mean I'm right? Scary question to ask. How do I know that I'm rational? Uh oh, oh shit. That's a hard question to answer. And so it's kind of interesting because if you really look at it from a neuroscience Someone's perspective, answer was Discord debates. what you can actually find is that emotions can hijack your skill at argument. Okay. True. So let's take the, the, the only way to know you're rational is, is whether you, is whether you succeed in di discord debates. Example of like someone who's in denial about being addicted to alcohol. So this person, people can approach someone who's addicted to alcohol and in denial with the most logical argument. And emotionally, if this person is not willing to accept that they have a problem, their rational mind will come up with all kinds of counterarguments, and you will never be able to convince them that they have a problem, right? Unless they are willing to entertain the idea that they have a problem, you will never be able to convince them. So it's kind of interesting because if you really look at That's the mind, true. what we find is that yes, you're... logic can be both. Uh, what's the term? It's it's uh, logic can be both sound and factual. Is that what it is? Valid. Sound versus valid. Sound versus valid. A deductive argument is sound if and only if it is both valid and all of its premises are actually true. So uh, there's there's a difference between there's a difference between something being logically valid and being logically sound. You can have a valid argument based on flawed premises, but you cannot have a sound argument based on um, based on flawed premises. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you all. Exactly. The pr precisely, Val Ninethouse says logic is a chain, and a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. But also, a chain can be chained to a false foundation. So, like for example, there are s there are valid arguments that can be made in uh, within Christianity, provided that you assume that the facts of Christianity are are correct, and those arguments uh, may not be sound, but they might be valid. So. Yeah, the soundness applies that the argument is rooted in legitimate fact. Yes, correct. Yes, precisely. Everybody's getting it. That's fantastic. Yes. Skill at argument can be hijacked by other parts of your mind. And so, it, you know, you can kind of get emotional. Like if you get someone who's like very good at arguing, you get them riled up, they will argue with you. The, their emotion will kind of fuel that argument. And then like they will, you will never be able to convince them that they're wrong. And they may even be able to outmaneuver you and they will walk away from that interaction thinking that they're right. And so if people are kind of confused about that, all you have to do is look at politics, right? Because when I hold a political belief and someone else holds the opposite political belief, both of us within our mind are convinced that our belief is logical and justifiable. No one in politics says my belief is idiotic. We always try to say, oh, this, this is the problem that I bring up with pragmatism. Everyone thinks that their viewpoint is pragmatic. That's why the term pragmatic is a useless term that you should always just discard. If anybody ever hits you with the pragmatism, just throw it away. Everyone thinks their position is pragmatic. It's just that everyone has different uh, assessments of what a pragmatic argument is. The other person isn't thinking clearly. They're emotional. And both sides will say this all the time. And if, if you really like kind of like ask the person, is your you know, belief logical? They'll say, of course it is. That's why I believe it. But if we really get, it, get into it, what we actually realize is that's not the case because logic may exist objectively, but when you take logic and you stick it in a human brain, some weird stuff starts to happen, okay? So let's try to like dig into why rational thinkers are actually quite emotional. Doe says, that feel when I decide I will choose not to do what is practical towards my goals. Yes, exactly. That is that is that is the type of line right there that reveals the uselessness of a term like pragmatic. Yes, today I will choose to do what I believe to be incorrect. No, obviously everybody thinks that their path is the most pragmatic. For example, a revolutionary would think their path is the most pragmatic because they don't believe that you can change it any other way. Whereas a reformist is going to think theirs is most pragmatic because they don't think revolution will work. It's a meaningless term. Thank you. That is a perfect line. And how, unless you understand the emotional aspect of your thinking, 
you will never <laughs> exactly sort of be thinking out. properly. Okay. So it starts with this. So, so a lot of people will say, okay, I'm not feeling emotion. Oh, I would totally. I mean, so far, this guy seems like he's got a pretty, like he's approaching this from a pretty good perspective. Um, I, I don't, I, I didn't know much about him. I'd heard some things, but it seems so far like this video is really interesting so far. I like his approach. So yeah, I mean, but I would, of course, I will sit down and talk with almost anybody. No, therefore I must be rational. Right. And that's kind of interesting. But if you look at it, some people are alexithymic. And so what that means is that they're they've actually trained themselves or been conditioned to turn down the volume on their emotional signals. If you actually look at these people, their EQ or emotional quotient is like lower than other people who are not a, a, a alexithymic. And so I know it sounds kind of weird, but just because you don't feel emotion doesn't mean that there isn't emotion that's active in your brain. So we true. all have this part of our brain. That's also true. Have you ever seen somebody seething where they're controlling their external expression of emotion, but it's very clear that they're actually incredibly angry? That is something that some people can do. Some people can control their emotions really, really well and 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 seem like they're not mad when in truth they might be completely compromised. Called the limbic system, and the limbic system is how we feel emotion. And I know it sounds kind of bizarre, but you can even look at um, you know, cases of people, and we'll we'll show some papers quickly. But it's you can look you at don't. people who have you know neuroscience things going on that suppress their ability to feel emotion. Give me a second. And here? what you actually find is those Thank circuits you. of the brain aren't turned off; they're actually turned on and acting in some way. Although there isn't awareness that the emotion is present. So I know it's I know it sounds kind of weird, but like if you engage in a logical argument with someone, the emotional parts of your brain are not going to be like non-functional they'll be functional and uh oh we found the one in chat oh look at this doesn't that mean we're better at controlling our mind no it means you're better at making yourself blind to your own demo in your own emotions ironically making you worse at controlling your mind if you can't acknowledge and deal with your emotions you are no better at controlling your mind than any than than the most hardcore uh t totalized man who can control everything within him you're better at bottling it. Yeah, this is pretty interesting so far. I actually like that he's addressing this. I'm actually super impressed at this so far. Maybe, I again, I tried not to jump the gun on any of this, but this is pretty interesting so far. Some amount of, of awareness will be suppressed. So one of the places that we actually see this is actually in schizophrenia research. So if you look at people with schizophrenia, their experience of emotion over time can be like blunted or diminished. So people with schizophrenia can develop something called flat affect, which means you can't see emotion in their face. So even though they could be experiencing emotion, their the visibility of their emotion. Okay, and by the way, it's not just schizophrenics. Lots of people have flat affects. The, it, this is flat affect is also common with certain types uh, with certain uh, types of autism. So it's not just schizophrenics, but but just just as a note. Emotion is kind of like there's a there's a break between these two circuits of your brain. And similarly, what we see in alexithymia is that the emotion is active on some level in your neuroscience and is actually hijacking your rationality, but your experience of it is not present, which sounds really, really weird, but that's because sort of like you're just not aware of it, but it's absolutely there, okay? So this is where let's kind of turn to a little bit of research, Okay. So we're going to explain this principle a little bit better. So inhibition of action, thought, and emotion, a selective neurobiological review. So this, this uh, review goes into a lot of information that is less relevant for us, uh, but is really interesting. Talks about, you know, inhibitory circuits for thoughts and actions and emotions. But here's the important part for us. So emotional dysregulation is a characteristic of a variety of forms of psychopathology and dysregulated fear responses play a prominent role in blah, blah, blah. Um, by studying extinction, researchers have made substantial progress in understanding the psychological and neural mechanisms underlying the inhibition of conditioned fear responses. Below, we review evidence indicating that the VM, that's ventromedial prefrontal cortex, amygdala, and hippocampus are critical brain regions involved in fear extinction. Okay? So let's just think a little bit about what this is saying, and I'll try to translate for y'all. What this means, if we're talking about inhibition of a, con a conditioned fear response, what that essentially means is that I have a fear response that is activating, 
but there are parts of my brain that are kind of inhibiting it or suppressing it. So the fear is there, and there are certain circuits of my brain that will actually like go out of their way really to try to suppress it from actually happening. <clears throat> and this is sort of what we see. And sometimes that's important, by the way. Like what he's talking about here, this is like a morally neutral thing. Sometimes we need to suppress fear response, right? Um, we have to be able to. So like if we like, like, for example, an example of when we would need to, to, to suppress a fear response is like if we were on a sinking boat and we're scared to jump in the water, but the only way to live is to jump in the water. We have to be able to suppress the fear response of the water to jump in the water. Yeah, courage or bravery is what it would be called on, on, on an abstract or, or, or uh, you know, sort of uh, metaphorical level. Let's continue. This is super interesting. In cases of like alexithymian argument is that a lot of people won't feel emotional. Thank you. But there are actually emotional circuits that are active that are being inhibited from like presenting in a particular way by other circuits of our brain. So our ventromedial prefrontal cortex, which is where a lot of our, you know, logic and executive function comes from, actively will inhibit the experience of things like fear or other kinds of emotions. But the really interesting thing is that there's reciprocal inhibition. So sometimes what can happen is even though we're trying to inhibit that circuit, that circuit can activate and actually shape our rational thinking, okay? And I know it sounds kind of weird, but if you have a friend who's very emotional, let's say that I'm afraid that my partner is cheating on me. Then what mm. happens is that emotion drives my rational thought process, right? And then I start thinking all these things that if my friends try to disprove me, I'm like, no, man, like I'm texting her and she's not answering. But it's like, dude, maybe she's asleep. It's like 1 a.m. No, man, like she's not answering because this, right? Yeah, see, see, this is where he's doing a really good job illustrating how you can build a valid, a valid line of logic that is based on unsound preconceptions so the valid line of logic is here's a bunch of evidence that's that indicates that my girlfriend is behaving differently than usual but the base assumption could be influenced very strongly by emotion a lot of debate bros get away with this of course they do of course they do it's hard to spot sometimes sometimes it's impossible to stop to spot i mean not to stop to spot and you can try to argue with that person as much as you want to but as long as that emotional circuitry is hijacking their rational circuitry, they will never like respond to your rational argument, right? And so this is kind of the tricky well, thing when it comes okay, to I don't the know human. If I, I don't know if I agree with his conclusion there, but but yes, I get what he's saying. Mind is we have rational thoughts and we have emotional thoughts. And we tend to think that if I don't sort of think, if I don't feel the emotion, then I must be rational. But actually, what, what I've discovered, and this is sort of what the Vedic, what the yogis discovered as well, is that if you are not aware of your emotions, if you can't feel emotions... I that like this! I like this! Okay, he's talking about something that is increasingly important in m the modern understanding of mental health, which is a thing called, ready? Mindfulness. Mindfulness! Okay? This is super interesting, okay? Because... Um, because as it turns out, we can't analyze our emotional state if we don't understand our emotional state. So it's actually very valuable for us to take time to dip into our emotional state to feel our emotions. Wait, remember when I was talking about the, uh, the litany against fear the other day? All of you imps who were here the other day, you must remember this. When I was talking about how letting fear pass through you over you and you know or over you and through you is important because it lets you know that the fear is there so that you can rationally analyze it yeah this is what i'm talking about right here yeah that's a dune quote ironically fear is the mind killer but it's true we know that our fears that our fear especially because fear is such a powerful response in human but that fear lust all kinds of things can override our um our mind uh, or, or our rational mind but that it is also important to understand those things you cannot think with the information your emotions are providing you if all you do is suppress your emotions and like i said there are select 
occasions where suppressing your emotions is the only option you have. But in general, we should seek to in, uh, interrogate to, not interrogate, that sounds too aggressive. We should seek to be mindful of our emotions so that they can, they can complement our analysis so that we can know what's actually there. Let's go. It doesn't mean that emotions don't exist. That just means that the action of emotions is not visible to you. And I would argue True, that the Dr. less K. emotion True, you're gamer. able to feel, the more likely your rational thinking is actually hijacked by your emotions. And this is where things like cognitive biases come from, right? So if we think about these things in psychiatry, like cognitive biases, denial, defense... Oof. Oh, look at this comment right here. Why is there a pit in my stomach right now? Oh, no. Oh, no. This right here... This this guy this person is having a growth moment. I uh listen. A growth moment. Growth moments hurt, okay? I'm telling you, they hurt. It hurts. It hurts, but it's good. This person will become a better person because of this moment. I'm telling you. Mechanisms. Projection. So what are what what does all this crap mean? Like why does this happen? Why do we have a cognitive bias? Why do we have these psychological defense mechanisms? When I oh, am still in denial. That's a psychological defense mechanism. So what am I defending against? I'm defending against emotion. So what we tend to find is that hyper-rational thinkers are not actually hyper-rational. They're actually, they're, the, at the conclusion that they come to is, I'm a rational thinker because I don't feel emotion. Whereas what's more likely, and this is what we get trained in in psychiatry, is to recognize that there are all these psychological defense mechanisms which manifest as rationality, but that person is not able to experience the underlying emotion. And if they're not able to experience it, it's essentially going to hijack your skill at argument and start disproving yep. people right and left. So it's kind of bizarre, but at the end of the day, what I've seen is that if you want to determine whether your thought process is truly rational or not, the main question you need to ask yourself is, am I aware of my internal emotional state? And until you- This is, oh my God. Okay, this, this is actually so good. So this has crossovers with the scientific method. The scientific method. Turns out one of the main things that you have to do in science is, is acknowledge openly what your biases may be because if you don't address what biases you may have going into an experiment you're more likely to let them affect the outcome of the experience of the experiment without even knowing you're doing it become super, aware super of your internal emotional state there's a decent chance that you're thinking yeah this is first level philosophy but but sometimes even philosophy students ignore this part because they're more obsessed with the textbook i can own you with this cool quote or whatever and people don't ever have this i'm super glad i, I gave this video a shot i'm super glad i hear i get name dropped in this video apparently is not actually going to be rational at all, but you'll be recruiting all these weird psychological defense mechanisms and, and like kind of hijacking your skill at argument to prove other people wrong. But really, you're the one who's know. like woefully incorrect. It's really bizarre, but that's kind of how it works. So if you want to be, become a more rational thinker, I, I know it sounds kind of weird, but what you actually need to do is I get learned mindfulness through Nietzsche. I think I think people are unnecessarily cruel to Nietzsche. There's listen, I've I've enjoyed a lot of Nietzsche, okay? Listen, I got a lot more reading to do, but I've enjoyed what I've seen, okay? People are people are are, are rough. Kruva says, You've got a heart of gold, Demon Mama. Don't let them take it from you. They can't. They can't. I had a heart of gold long before I became a streamer. Thank you. But that's true. It's true. It's one of my things. Uh and I would rather lose I would rather stop being a streamer than lose my heart of gold. There you go. Gain emotional Thank you so awareness, much for the two, tier two right? Seven. Because w w when we really think about a rational thinker, like someone who makes good decisions, it's the person who says, oh, like emotionally, I feel embarrassed going to a party. But now that I'm aware that I have that embarrassment, I can act in spite of it and kind of do the right thing. Whereas mm -hmm. what will happen if we're not careful is that emotional embarrassment will be like, ah, it's not worth going to right? Oh, I'm not even going to have a good time. Oh, it's so far away. I come up with all of these. I know this is a Much weird love, word. Krupa, I know you guys you. have never heard this word before. It's, it's a very rare Sanskrit word. Rationalizations, Ooh. right? And Ooh. what does that mean? Like, what is a rationalization? 
It's our brain's emotion hijacking our skill of argument to come up with a logical response that other people are not able to argue against, right? Someone in, um, so deviled leg in, uh, in, in Twitch chat says debate bros are debate bros because they do this almost pathologically. Um, it feels weird to say debate bros with regard to this when demon mama does it too. Most people do it, not all the time, but we do. Uh, I'd consider Demon Mama more of someone who is good at engaging in a debate bro space. As uh, as someone who did do competitive debate in high school, there's a really specific mindset that debaters get into that they have to get over. Debate bros stop being obnoxious debate bros if they can recognize the limitations of debate. I never I never did uh, like high school debate. I learned debate in the dirty trenches of family arguments about religion. So yes, I I, I appreciate that you recognize that I I am not a I am a transplant to the debate space and that it is not my uh, my sort of natural inclination, <laughs> so to say. But yes, of course there are of course times in which um there are of course times in which I've com I've I've committed all kinds of uh, of of you know mistakes or fallacies or whatever. But when I'm called out on them, I tend to have a very I tend to acknowledge them very openly as you can see in most of my videos that I have up about me taking criticism. I try to be very aware of my emotions and my own biases. Yeah. 85D2D Derek, thank you so much for the $10. How can we tell if we are suppressing emotions? That's hard. You have to spend time in your own mind, which is really hard. Which is really really hard to do. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what of what Dr. K is saying, he's unironically a really good communicator. He's breaking down pretty complex concepts and keeping me heavily engaged. He would be a tight teacher. Yeah, he seems pretty good so it's far. It's crazy. I'm actually really impressed. We I even have words in our language titles. where we intrinsically understand this stuff. We intuitively get this when we use the word rationalization. And what we tend to find is that the more unaware you are of your emotions, the more your rational thought process will be filled with rationalizations instead of real logic. So that's how, you know, you got to be careful. But if you consider yourself a rational thinker and you don't experience much emotion, there's a decent chance, and you guys may know people who are like this too, that actually your emotions are a actually out. running the show from behind the scenes. And that your rational mind is a puppet that's being controlled by your emotions. Yeah, people are mentioning Ben Shapiro and stuff like that. Yeah, so like, I, I, I'm not surprised that, makes sense. Shrewd, shrewd that people are drawing these correlations. I don't really know. Like, I, I try not to make judgments oh, about people unless I've talked to them personally. Um, but when someone is saying rationaliz rationalizing is making excuses, absolutely, right? So this is where... Um, you know, if you kind of think about it, like, why are you making an excuse? It's because there's an emotional pain that you want to dodge. Oh, my it's God. It's a protective mechanism. That's Three what call people have. Sh <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Damn, I feel good that my name isn't getting dropped that much. On defense mechanisms. So when people are kind of asking the question, okay, how do I become more aware of my emotions? A lot of Hassan. So I know it's kind of weird. Oh, my weird, God. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> A lot of Hassans and a lot of destinies on here. Oh, if Jesus. you just actually sit down and pay attention, you may discover that <laughs> there's a lot of stuff about your life that your, oh, your no. mind is really working hard to avoid, right? Because oh, like, my God. If, if we open that can of worms, if we do say, okay, like this was my fault, or I am an addict, holy crap, what does that mean? It means I'm letting my kids down. It means I'm letting my spouse down. It means that I'm disappointing the people at work. It means that, like, I have a problem that, like, I don't know if I can fix. Because I, I you know, I can fix all of the rational things in my head because my mind is telling me it's again. just this. We got more. You can fix that. But there's a lot of fear with, like, letting go of your defense mechanisms and, like, you know, in a raw way, like, facing your problems. Because Hassan you, named again. You can't Jesus. fix the addiction. You can fix all this other stuff, which you keep on saying is the problem. No, it's not. Video games aren't the problem. The problem is I'm just like not disciplined enough. I just need to be more disciplined. I wish I was more disciplined. This isn't the problem. This is. It's not the marijuana that's the problem. Like the marijuana helps with my anxiety. D Wait, is Dr. K going to ignore all the Destiny and Hassan mentions, but then talk about Demon Mama? I hope so. That would be so validating. All the Destiny and Hassan get ignored, but Demon Mama is important enough to respond to? Fuck yeah. Like I don't, you know, the problem is that 
the capitalistic society and student His loans and, and all this like interview psychanalysis of destiny is so good maybe oh no i can't do that i can't do that that would be maybe i'll watch on my own time that sounds funny the world is going to hell it's not marijuana that's the issue it's like look at all of these things this is what happens right once the emotions hijack the rational part of our mind we come up with a lot of evidence which is compelling it's not like our mind thinks false things it's just really selective and it's like no man like the reason that you're not doing well in life is absolutely because of capitalism which is fair. Like it's, you can say that there's a predatory work environment. You're not logically incorrect there. It's just blaming, you know, the universe is an awesome way to give a pass to yourself. Right? I think this is a weird framing personally. I think this is the first major critique I have here because it's not about like, okay, I get what he's saying, like blaming the universe, but I don't think that it's usually about blame. And I think this is one of the things. I think a lot of people reach for blame um, when it's not really about blame. It's about accurately analyzing the strategic play field that you're on, right? Like, uh, like, 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 for example, if you if you play on the play field of just any individual job, you will forever be leaving jobs and going to other jobs that are identically the same. But if you recognize that we live in a capitalist system, you might you are going to analyze the strategic playing field significantly different. So I recognize where he's coming from with this because of a lot of Americans are very individualistic and they just tend to go, OK, well, I can blame this on X and therefore forget about it. But I think it's important to recognize that recognizing things like climate change, these huge issues, isn't really about blame. It's, it can be at times, but it's usually about accurately assessing the play field that you're on. Because then it isn't your fault. Yeah, like everyone else is wrong, you know? And I see this a lot with like people who are, you know, I, I don't want to get into this, but there, there, you know, there's some things that are medically, you know, we know are like medically dangerous, uh -oh. right? So there are certain aspects of the self and in our desire to be like an accepting society, what, what some people have started uh -oh. to do is normalize or even promote things that are like scientifically medically dangerous. Uh -oh. And they say like, oh my God, like, I don't want to deal with the shame of a particular aspect of myself. Therefore, I'm going to demonize all of society instead of like take care of myself, right? And as a scientist, like as a medical doctor, like there, there's clear, you know, there's like a clear right answer about what's healthy and what's unhealthy. Ah, there's the name drop. It's funny, I've never done this. Let's see where this goes. Oh no. Healthy. And then what? once we get into these like psychological like games of like i don't want to notice that everybody just says fat people this right here is what we talk about when we say fat phobia the fact that the first thing that people think of is fat people and not literally alcoholics smokers gun owners who own unsafe guns people who drive big dangerous trucks that's what's fat phobia it's not the fact that there are no health things that can be affected by weight it's the fact that 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 americans fucking hate fat people they hate them out of scope with the actual dangers of being fat we'll see where this goes we got another demon mama name deal drop with here. the shame that i feel internally therefore i'm gonna play a really cool trick y'all ready for it i don't have to be ashamed if there's nothing wrong right so i have an op, Why is shame? OP oh we got a third name drop to deal with internal shame just blame hmm. society and normalize the way that you are it comes back to if you don't deserve me you don't if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Like, why do I need- I hate that quote. I hope they're not- I hope he's not thinking of me. I hate that fucking quote. To grow as a person. Like, I people need to be more quote. accepting. It's not my problem that I'm an asshole. People need to be more compassionate. It's their problem. Everyone is so mean hmm. and cruel nowadays. Like, I don't need to improve. People need to be nicer to me. Wait, when did this come out? Let's see. When did this video come out? This video came out in August. That would have been the self-diagnosis take- would have been this period. This would have been the self-diagnosis take. And now everyone, so be careful, be careful, be careful, because now everyone's like, oh, like, you're taking your particular, the people that you dislike or you disagree with, and what is your mind doing? Yeah, the people that disagree with me, they're the ones that do what Dr. K is talking about. They're the idiots that he's talking about. Yeah, that's them, 
That's the take your pick, conservatives, liberals, this person, that person. Mm. Take your pick. Whichever side of the argument you're on, what are you doing right now? You're putting the other people that you argue against. You said, Dr. K, that's these people. No, bro, like you could be that people. That's what we're saying. We're not talking about the people you argue against. We're talking about you. Hmm. It's crazy. Hmm. Do you see how your mind does that? It's so damn quick. I'm interested. Because now it has a justification to disprove the other person's point. It's like, yeah, I'm right. Dr. K said so. Be careful. Okay? Be careful. We're not here to talk about other people. This stream is here to talk about you. Right? Why do you take this piece of juicy, juicy evidence? Because, damn, it's a good piece of evidence. Did you guys see that scientific paper, man? Oh, man. It's definitely this person. And it, it could be, you could be right, right? I'm not saying that they're not like that. But just be careful about how your mind, what does your mind emotionally feel when you assign this idiocy to your opponents? Hmm. Oh my God, doesn't it feel so good? Feels so good. Oh, look at these noobs. They're like this. And then look at that emotion. And what do you think that emotion is doing? It's hijacking your rational circuitry. Damn, that was a, that like, was a, oh, look, I gotta say, whatever, however this ends up, whether he ends up calling me a dumbass, that was a smart move on his chat. That was a smart fucking move on his chat. How I get to feel better than them. That is my favorite thing to do, is I need to be better than that person. Oh, that feels so damn good. Be careful. Be careful. Okay? Be careful. So we're not saying, and this is the key thing to remember, when your emotions hijack your rational circuitry, mm. your rational circuitry never comes up with stuff that's wrong. I'm waiting okay? for the name This drop. is the tricky thing. Because you think, oh, doesn't that mean my rational circuitry is wrong? Incorrect. It's selective. Huge difference. It's incomplete. Right? So if I ask a girl out, girl says no, then I feel hurt, rejected, and ashamed. Oh my God. Until I start dissing her, and it's like, oh, she doesn't deserve me. Oh, then I don't so have to So somebody feel lied. Well, it's an interesting her video loss. nonetheless. Oh my God. I get to feel better about myself. I was doing it as a favor. It was charity on my part. And if she doesn't want to accept the charity, I'm too cool for her. Beautiful. She wasn't even that attractive. Maybe the name drop was right? just in the chat. It doesn't have to be, I'm just saying. Also, notice that they all drop my name, not with my actual take, which was about self-diagnosis, but with me being fat. Did you notice that? Did anybody notice that little, that little nice, uh, nice detail? That because, you know, my mm. experience when I you speak in the first person, I adopt a heteronormative masculine perspective. Because these are the thoughts that I had. When I was like 19 years old, a freshman in college. Kind of weird. Kind of weird how things work out like that. Oh, because I am fat. But it's funny how much they fixate on it. Constantly. Constantly. Constantly made fun of for my weight. Even though I'm not even, I'm not even that, that fat. I'm not even the fattest person that I even know. Like, not even close. Asking a girl out, and we sh when she turned me down, that's what my mind did. Came up with all these reasons... That protected me from... Are, am I fat? Yes, I am. Feeling ashamed of myself. I'm not... Right? Like, it goes I the other way. way. Like, dudes can do this with dudes. Oh, true. You, yeah, I mean, that's true too, the kid. Uh, it doesn't matter what weight you are. You're going to be either too fat or too skinny. That's how it is for women. That's true. That's true. Femme presenting people get... get you. If you're... There is no... There is no actual correct one. Yeah. Women can do it with dudes. Women can do it with women. It doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't my face when a romantic. fat person has an opinion. You're right? fat. It can be like a job interview. It can be like a, you can invite a friend to a social event and then they can turn you down and then you feel rejected and like you're not good enough for them. And then the mind flips over and says, oh, like it's his loss. Right? So where I'm not trying to demonize y'all, I'm y'all are great. Y'all are fantastic. Let's understand these parts of ourselves. Right? And let's understand that it's actually okay to feel shame. It's okay to feel rejected because sometimes we get rejected. And as we start to look into that, right, as we start to face our problems and we face like, oh, wow, like I really feel like shameful and rejected. Mm. As we start to acknowledge those emotions, then we can leverage our truly free rational thinking on it. And then we'll discover one of two things. I know it's crazy, but we're going to discover one of two things. One is, oh, crap, maybe I deserve to be rejected. 
maybe there's something here that I need to get better at, right? Like maybe like I'd do a better job at romantic relationships and people would say yes if I... Or maybe like there's just vibes are fucked and it has nothing to do with what you're doing. I, you know, groroomed myself. So you that's how you make progress, right? You sort of notice that there are particular things you could do wrong. Other option. Maybe you'll discover that they're a toxic fucker. Right? Because some people reject you and it's really not fair. Like some people reject you because they've got an ego thing going on. They've got emotional crap going on. Maybe Maybe you'll discover that there's someone in your life that persistently makes you feel a negative way and that that actually isn't fair. But you're not going to know the answer to that until you authentically and calmly look at it and face what you feel. Oh, wow, this person routinely makes me feel really bad about myself. Right? So then, like, once you're like, oh, and then it's kind of tricky. I I know we're kind of going off on a tangent here. But if you're not careful, what that'll turn into is, like, all kinds of things to make yourself feel better. When you have a toxic person in your life and they reject you, what do you actually do to suppress that emotion? You bend over backwards for them, right? Oh, like this person rejected me. Let me, oh, do you want to go out to dinner on Friday? Oh, you said no and I feel hurt and rejected? Oh, it's my treat. I just got a bonus and I'm looking to celebrate. I'll pay for your food. And then the person is like, uh, okay, fine. And then they come out, right? And then it's kind of interesting because then what happens is you start engaging in all of this behavior to avoid that feeling of rejection and I mean, propagate the that's toxic relationship. Thing. I don't know if this is a perfect example right? to it's really, this it's really tricky. dynamic, but... but that's where, once again, the solution is still the same. As long as you're able to notice that shame, notice that rejection, be aware of it, even start to tolerate it because that's mm-hmm. a big part of it, not even being aware of it. Awareness is like 50% of tolerance, to be honest. And so as you're able to do that, then you're like, oh, actually, like, I feel ashamed. And once you acknowledge the shame, once you feel the shame, it's no longer secretly working behind the scenes to, like, manipulate your behavior into propagating toxic relationships. Does rationalizing ultimately feed a negative self-image? Absolutely. So remember, the goal of rationalizing is to support whatever you feel, right? So if you look at, like, doomers, okay, like doomers actually maybe doomers is not a good example let me think about this so does rationalizing ultimately feed a negative self-image absolutely let's look at someone who's depressed so in the mind of a depressed person they have a core feeling of low self-worth okay and then like rationally they'll give you a thousand justifications why there's low self-worth and you can argue i can i can argue with my patients there's so much reason to live like you literally have three kids that are telling you that they hope you get better and they want to see you again fun, baby boy. and they love you very much and they don't want you to go anywhere. They're literally telling you that. And then the stronger the emotion, the stronger the rationalization. They're just saying that they don't understand that like video. I'm causing them so much pain by being sick. They would be so much better if they could like worry about people who deserved their love. It's like the strength of the rationalization supports the emotion. It's crazy, right? And so it absolutely can reinforce the negative self-image. And that's why talking to people logically about why they should live doesn't work very well. I mean, it can help. It doesn't always work very well. Some people engage with that very, very well. Other people don't. It really depends. You have to know the individual. Some. And that's where you got to acknowledge the emotion first. Then you can talk to them logically about it. (laughs) <laughs> someone's asking how do you deal with a string of toxic relationships by looking at the common variable Ooh. i'm not trying to be mean there but like what is it that you do if there is what one. are the emotional needs and this is the really tricky thing because people who wind up in strings Oof. of toxic relationships there's something really powerful that's drawing you to that person that's what you need to understand okay it's a fantastic question But it's this kind of thing where, like, I know it sounds kind of weird, but if you look at people who are routinely in toxic relationships, the person in the toxic relationship makes you feel the way, makes you feel the way that you feel about yourself. That is why people wind up in toxic relationships over and over and over again. That's that's partially true. They confirm what you believe about yourself. That's possible. That's possible, yes. And so human beings will go for, like, confirmation and order over pain 
So you will, like, human beings are just wired this way. It's like the way that we've evolved. I don't know if we'll that's accept. entirely accurate. I don't know if that's entirely accurate. A pain entirely that we understand that. and are familiar with because there's a part of your mind that's like, we can survive. Oh, here's an interesting one right here. I have BPD and recently found this out and routinely wound up with people with n narcissistic personality disorder, sadly, and it's totally ruined me and I'm trying to heal from it. Hey, hey, I feel that. I feel that hardcore. Although I've gotten significantly better about that. This way, way better about that over the course of my life, especially after I learned about having BPD. Done it 10 times before. This is home field advantage. And so if you believe something about yourself and then the toxic person reinforces that belief, it fits. It's like, oh, that, that's, that's, I knew it. I knew it. So it's really tricky, but that's the problem. Because, I mean, it could be circumstances and stuff like that. Like, maybe just literally your social circle is filled with people who are toxic. But generally speaking, what I find is that people who engage in toxic relationships over and over and over again, I know it sounds kind of weird, but when they come into my office, we don't work on the yeah, people that they're dating. Yeah, this seems pretty good so far. I'm them. actually pretty, this is a very solid and video. And so I encourage all of you Healthy to gamer, get accept responsibility for, for video, your situation for in sure. life. Because if you accept responsibility for your situation, you also oh, have the I'm power sorry, to control it. Nasty. Right? I know it sounds kind of weird. We're but not really doing other mental, people are we're not entirely doing a mental health segment. We just we just dropped on this, and my name was dropped in this video by the chat, not by the actual content creator, Doctor K. But I hope that you feel better, and uh, I'm really sorry. I know what it's like. I, uh, you know, I deal with my my probably more than my fair share of mental struggles. But there's much love for you here. You know. I have a massive bias against BPD. Ooh, maybe we will have a mental seg uh, mental health segment. Let's talk about that. I'm, then I can't do anything about it. Because I can't change other people. You can try. <laughs> but it's not going to work. But if you accept responsibility for your situation, that also means that if it's your fault that you're here, you could have done things differently, which means that you can do things differently. So it's really tricky, but responsibility and empowerment come hand in hand. With great power comes great responsibility is absolutely right because that's the only way it works. So if y'all feel, if, you, if you're saying to yourself it's all your fault, that also means that it's within your power to change it. And that's well, just, just like, are you willing to carry that burden? BPD for a bit, I guess. Let's talk about that. That was a good video. Okay, I'm going to give that a like. That was a good fucking video. I like that. I like that video a lot, actually. Even though I got name dropped and his chat called me fat. Um.